I thought I'd just show you a little demonstration, something I've wondered about for a while and actually thought I'd have a look into it. Now with this recent thing I've been doing with these boards I've been making, it was just the divider boards, these things, which are probably out of focus. The output of those is dependent upon the input resistance of the meter you plug it into. Now that wasn't apparent, I didn't actually mention that in the videos I did previously, I probably should have done. The reading you get will depend upon what resistance the input terminals have. Quite commonly, Multimeters have got a 10 mega ohm resistance. You think 10 mega ohm, that's fine, it shouldn't really affect anything. Well, yes and no. Generally, no, but if you're measuring across a resistor divider, yes, it will have an effect. I can actually demonstrate this on here. So, currently, I've got these hooked together. This is in DC volts range, manual range, right? So, I just got to one millivolt, right, for example, or one volt even. Then, this is the test voltage that this meter is putting out right now. Okay, that's interesting. Then, I think about the other way around. This is measuring the resistance of this meter. Now currently, it's in giga ohms. Now this has got a 10 giga ohm input impedance, as does this one, in certain ranges. I'm gonna show you both of them. That's out of range. That's out of range. That's out of range, that's still in giga ohms. 100 volt range. Now it's mega ohms. 10 mega ohms input impedance. And it's pretty close as well. And that's the 100 volt range in the 1000 volt range, also 10 mega ohms. So this switches between 10 mega ohms and 10 giga ohms, depending on the range you're in, which can cause you some reading errors depending on what you're reading. So this isn't something which is obvious. Other people which may have come across this before themselves would be fully aware of this. This isn't something I've actually worried about before, but as I've just been working with these boards, I've noticed that it's having an effect. And so I thought I'd do a little video on it because it may not be an obvious thing for people thinking that, oh, I'm getting a weird behaviour on my test gear, on my on my test setup, you know, I'm getting something which is okay, but then it's not, and nothing's changing. Well, this would be why, potentially. So let's do this the other way around. Let's shove this into DC volts, and we'll shove this one into resistance instead. Auto range it. And if we do the ranges on here manually, we'll see this low range here, which I'm not sure what range that one actually is, because um, obviously this is putting out one volt as a test voltage. 9.99 mega ohms. Next range up, 9.99. 9.99. The lowest range, go right down. This has got the same thing where this is in gig ohms as well. All right, these inputs are gig ohms. So this is why I get an overload in here because it's in 10 gig ohms, not 10 mega ohms. Got by one range, still not there. Upper one range, still not there. Upper one range, there it is. All right. So these lower ranges are in gig ohms, same as these ones are. So I think it's like 30 millivolts, 300 millivolts, and 3 volt range on this are in gig ohms. Anything above that, they're in mega ohms. But there is a way of working around it on this particular meter. You can change it. So if you go into here, go to F, you got fixed, and we can change it to off and on. Well, off is by default, that's what it normally is. If we turn that fixed to on, now this will only be mega ohms all the time. Doesn't matter what range you're in. So I bring it down, get my hands out of the way. Always mega ohms. Okay, that way you've got a predictable loading on your circuitry you're trying to test. So if you know that it's always going to be 10 mega ohms, you can allow for that, you can calculate that in. So that's quite a nice feature on this particular meter is that you can do that. Now it's going to be mega ohms all the way up. So that's good. So I thought you might find that interesting. Hopefully you did. Maybe it was a bit of a, a learning experience for you. And the main thing I came out as to say, because I'm working on those voltage divider boards, and because they are a voltage divider, and it's got a resistive element to them, the resistance on those boards, in parallel with the resistance from the inputs on these, changes the result. You know, in order to get a known output, you need to know what the output, or the input impedance of your meter is. So if you calibrate that for this meter, it'll only work accurately in this meter. If you put it to this meter, it'll be slightly different because these aren't exactly the same. This has been calibrated using my Fluke 5450A, and this pretty much matches. It's very slightly different, but it's not much. There is a slight difference in, in resistance readings between them, so they're not exactly the same. You can see that you know, there is an error over there between the two meters with the input impedance. So if you allow for that, you need to know. It's quite an important thing. So. If you have got, say, like in my example, I'm putting in, go from memory, I think it's 100k in one case. Is it 1k or 10k, depending on which ratio I'm using, if a 1 
uh, 10 to 1 or 100 to 1. So if, you, if it says 100k onto the inputs, shoving 10 mega ohms across 100k changes the 100k reading by quite a bit. It changes it by about 9%. That gives you a wrong reading. You can compensate for it, you can just tune it and allow for that to work, that's fine, you can do it. But you have to know for it, otherwise you might move that particular piece of gear onto a different meter, which got a very slightly different input impedance, and it will read differently. Like I was getting different readings between three meters, between the Datron, the Siglant, and the HP. I was getting three different readings. Now the Siglant was being the most well behaved, because that has got a bit more of an obvious input thing there. And when I was testing on the bench, I was only actually testing up to 10 volts, which meant I was only getting at most 1 volt out, which means it was in the ranges where it's only staying giga ohms. And giga ohms is having a negligible effect on my boards. You're talking about a really small percentage. So I was tuning for that, and it'd be fine, it'd be linear, it'd look absolutely fine. Bring it over here, different story. Slightly different input resistances, it would change it. When I went to higher voltages, it skewed the upper. So the upper actually changed. I could have these sets, say, like putting... 100 volts in doing a 10 to 1 ratio, but 100 volts in getting 1 volt out, these are both free quiet. But when I go to, say, 400 volts, then it'd be reading wrong, it'd be like 9% down. And I was thinking, it's my calibrator got a problem? Is there something wrong with that? But no, it's actually just the switching over. So, things to watch out for. And don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon, give us a thumbs up, that sort of stuff if you found interesting. And maybe share the video if you think that other people might also need to know this. Nice little demonstration showing you what can happen. In fact, I might show you some more. So I'm going to demonstrate something. I'm going to do a demonstration, I'm actually a real world demonstration while I'm just explaining it. Here's two balls I've made. They're both 10 to 1 ratio, but they're using different resistance values. So one is basically a 10 meg ball, one is a 1.3 meg ball, something like that. I can actually show you what resistance is on here. So unplug this. If I stick this across the input of the ball, like that. See, 1.3 meg, right? That's what this one worked out as roughly. I wasn't looking for nice round numbers when I designed these resistance values on these. I just wanted something about a meg, and I just, you know, didn't really care as long as the ratios were right. Didn't matter. So this is doing 1.3 meg, so that's the lower one. And this other board here, which I built today, is 10 meg, thereabouts. Well, that's not perfect, but it's thereabouts because of the resistor chain here wasn't quite right. It's slightly over, so I had to do the other one a little bit compensated for as well. So it's slightly over 10 meg. Not perfect, but close. So this one is got much more loading on the input of the meter than this one. So we'll see what these do to the actual readings, okay? I'll demonstrate it on this one here, because I can change it. I'll come back once I've got it set up. But I've got the 10 meg ball plugged in, and I'm currently inputting nothing. So I'm going to put in 1 volt to start with. And because I've still got the divider turned on, we're getting 0.91 over here. So let's go up to a higher level, so we can see a bit more clearly, right? So that should be a true 1 to 1, well 10 to 1 division, because I've already tuned this board. Though that may drift a bit because it's not shielded and environmental conditions changing all the time, that sort of stuff. So, so that's 0.91 we're getting there. Now if I change the input, that fixed thing, we'll make that off again. That's off there, sorry, which range am I on? Oh, that's all I range this thing. Here we go, here we go, I'll put it on the range. So, here we are, we're getting 1 volt out with 10 volts in. Obviously a bit of noise and stuff like that. I could filter that actually, just to tidy it up a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of what we're getting. But if I then come over here and do that input, that's currently off, we'll turn it on. Now the range it's in, it will, it will turn it on and add it on. I'll just do filter again, I should actually recalculate. So there we go, now we're down to that. Now nothing else has changed apart from switching that input resistance on here from 10 gig ohms to 10 mega ohms. And you can see the difference. 0 0.083 difference. 8.3% difference in output voltage as read by the meter because of that. Okay, so let's change this, let's drop this back down. Oh, it's still on 10 volts, it should be right. I'll be able to touch it at 10 volts. I was thinking about 100 volt range, I'm going to touch it there. So this is the 1 mega ohm board, right? I'm going to put on now. It's exactly the same thing. Nothing else has changed. And we did a filter. Now we're getting 9.88 because that's a different resistance on the output. And that's the only difference. Now if we come over there, turn the filter back off. Well, turn it back on again, rather. So it's always. Uh, so it goes back to gig ohms. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to do. Go back to gig ohms. 
and we filter that. Alright, so we're back up here. So this one's obviously tuned very slightly lower than the other one. Not much in it. That's basically one volt coming out with 10 volts going in. Okay, 10 to 1 still. This is a 1 mega ohm board compared to a 10 mega ohm board. And so we'll turn this F back on again. This input impedance. Fix Z. Um, that's what it refers to anyway. We'll turn it back on again. Goes back to 10 mega ohm. There we go, 9.88. Same deal, having an effect, but the effect is much less. Instead of being down to 0.91, it's now 0.98. Don't forget, so this is a divider. So we've got a divider on this board, but there's also a divider between the board and the meter. All right, that's enough waffling about that. Hope you found it interesting. Catch you later. Bye. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you found it interesting. Thanks for Patreon supporters. All that good stuff.